Hey guys, welcome to the Ultimate Personal Trainer Podcast. Today we are going to be talking about general population programming. Okay, so general population programming is something that we all have to do, but really, really misunderstood because the vast majority, and I've been guilty of this too, of program design education is designed towards higher level clients. And by higher level, I mean athletic goals, bodybuilding goals, powerlifting goals. That stuff is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I love it. I think it's great training, but for a general population client, it doesn't always get the best out of them and doesn't lead to the best outcomes. And today I'm going to go over the reasons why. Now, the first reason why that programming may not work is can the client do the program? In fact, this is the most important question when looking at any program for any client, regardless of goal. Can they actually do the thing that you want them to do? And by the program, I don't just mean the sets and reps on the piece of paper or the training app. I mean the overall intent of the entire program. Can they do the nutritional approach? Can they do the supplementation? Can they do the lifestyle? Can they do the check-ins? Can they do the exercise program? Can they devote the time, energy, and effort to doing all of those things? This is the most important thing that you need to ask. And this is a mistake that so many online trainers make. What they do is they give the client a program with a whole bunch of tempo and complicated exercise splits and a whole bunch of other stuff and a macro specific plan that they have to follow and the client can't do the thing. So the client doesn't do anything and doesn't get any outcome and then quits. This is the worst problem that we see with online coaching and something that we see we try each and every day to change, to give people programs that they can do. Now, the second most important thing for general population programming that you need to ask yourself or that you need to be aware of, sorry, is that periodization of fitness qualities isn't that important to them and that's more important to train concurrently. So in the past, we used to believe that interference effect, so training for two different goals at two different times, would totally mitigate the adaptions of EVA training. And that's simply not true. This does happen at the highest of the high levels. So if Usain Bolt started randomly training for a marathon, his sprint performance would drop. But for the average general population client, training for concurrent goals at the same time is probably the best use of unlimited training time that they have. Remember, the complexity of the training program and specificity depends on the actual client in front of you. So if I'm training a purely power athlete, I'm probably not gonna put long runs into their program simply because it's a waste of time and everything we need to do is very, very specific. But if I got a general population client, they need to have some element of agility in their program. They need to have some element of mobility. They need to have some element of power, strength, hypertrophy and cardiovascular fitness. So concurrent training programs are the best way to go with a general population client. That may be starting off with a mobility-based warm-up, doing some jumps and some power lifts, doing some heavy strength training, then doing a little bit of hypertrophy accessory work and then a conditioning or cardio circuit at the end to give them the best possible outcomes. That is a great way to program for a general population client who has multiple fitness goals and wants to use fitness to make their life better not make their life revolve around their fitness. That last sentence there is a very important thing for young personal trainers to keep on board because for our clients, fitness isn't as big a priority for them as it is for us. And that's totally okay. So what we need to do is basically put multiple qualities together so they can achieve all their goals in one time frame. And then finally, and this is something that I struggled with for a long period of time when training general population clients and that was due to my need to make everything specific and have the most technically correct program and train fitness qualities correctly is to make it fun, okay? There's nothing wrong with having fun in the gym. In fact, it's probably a really valuable thing for the vast majority of general population clients who don't have too much fun in their day-to-day. How many general population clients still maintain a regular active sport? There's not that many, and the ones that do are generally pretty injured, but not to digress, most people don't have that much fun throughout the day. They get up, they do stuff, they go to work, they go home, they eat, they sleep, they drink, they go out on the weekend and drink, and that's basically it. They don't have physical fun. So changing our perception of exercise to make movement fun is a really good thing for changing someone's relationship to exercise and improving their adherence. This can be done in the form of challenges, weird partner workouts, medicine ball work, chucking things. There's so many tools to make exercise fun. And this is one of the things that led to the popularity of things like CrossFit and F45 and training modalities that had a lot of variation built into it. People found the variation fun. 
So if we can build some variation and fun into our programming, we're gonna find that people stick to it for a lot longer. And even back in the golden days of bodybuilding, uh, they would have fun in the gym too, where they do like running racks and all other kinds of training techniques that we might know now by science aren't that good, but they're sure as hell fun to do on a semi-regular basis to push yourself to a new limit and just have some fun doing something a little bit weird. So, drill pop program, remember the following. Make sure when you look at it, the client can do it. That is the most important thing. The next one is not to worry about periodizing their fitness qualities, but to kind of train it all in a concurrent program, which is also gonna help make it fun and add variety to the program for the client. And then finally, make sure you do have some specific time to make it fun. If you run a fitness studio, so a gym, personal training studio, and run semi-private classes, that's gonna be a big part of the success of this studio. The ability of the coaches to make it fun, the hard stuff, and then having some fun elements into the actual training. This will guarantee that you have higher levels of retention and higher levels of client success. When you're working online, it's a little harder to do that, but generally when you're working online, you need to focus on can they do the program and you've got more specific goals that you're going for. So guys, if you're keen, we have a free general pop training course where it talks about all this kind of stuff. It's eight weeks, it's totally free. Links in the description. No need to do anything but to fill it in. We'll send you the course straight away. Thanks heaps guys. Have a good one and speak soon.